Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am currently at my public library waiting for it to open because I'm picking up your manga recommendations. So I went onto Twitter the other day and I asked for manga recommendations and you all gave me so many amazing recommendations. So I've been looking through those trying to figure out which ones I'm the most interested in at this current time. And I found that some of them are available at my library and I'm gonna pick them up today. But I also decided that I wanted to browse a little bit and try to find some manga that I'm interested in just based off the synopsis. And so for the next 24 hours, I'm gonna read manga and eat snacks which is our next stop, the store. We're gonna go to the store and get some snacks. back from the library and I have a big old bag of manga so I think I did a pretty good job of keeping it half and half where half of it is something that I was interested in and it wasn't recommended to me and then the other half are books that were recommended to me. So let's start with the ones that were recommended to me. The first one on my pile is One Piece and this is I believe a pirate story. I actually don't know that much about it but this one seems really fun. The next one on my pile is The Demon Prince of Momochi House. So this one has one of my favorite tropes which is the main character lives between the human and the spiritual realm so I'm excited to read this one. The next one on my pile is My Hero Academia and this one I picked up solely because Rachel recommended it and said that it was kind of a funny take on superheroes I believe. It has that vibe. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest, I don't love superhero stories. It's why I don't watch or read anything Marvel or DC related. I'm just not that interested. The only thing I've ever really been interested in superhero wise was Black Panther, but this seems funny. And then the last one is Tokyo Ghoul. I got the first two volumes and this one is the one I am most excited about. I believe that this was recommended by three different people that commented and so I knew this one had to be good. And then the rest of the manga that I picked up are things that I was interested in. So I actually picked up the second volume of Orange because I have the first volume and I have been reading it for a completely different video. So I'm almost done with that and I'm really, really enjoying it. And then I picked up Frankenstein by Jinji Ito. This is something I've been wanting to read for a really long time. I love Frankenstein. It's one of the only like classic horrors that I have read and reread many times. So I do like different people's spins on Frankenstein. I haven't ever read a Jinji Ito, but I've always been interested. And I know that this is a collection of short stories. So one of them is the Frankenstein story. And then there are, I think there's 12 other stories. Um, I believe the Frankenstein one is the longest. So my plan is to read one or two of these stories between each volume of manga that I read. And then the last one that I picked up is The Promised Neverland. I got the first two volumes because I love anything that's like boarding school related. Related, but I think that there is some magic or something that's going on outside that these kids don't really know about. This I'm very excited to read and I'll probably save these two volumes for last. Okay, so those are all the books that I'll be reading for this vlog. I'll probably be starting with Frankenstein, but first I'm gonna go eat lunch. I finished Frankenstein, which is the first story in this collection, and it was okay. I think I would give it a three stars because there are moments where I was really into it, and then there were other moments when I just thought it was kind of unbelievable. <laughs> 
Not that a monster that somebody created is believable. It's just the characters who were so willing to believe and get involved in certain things in this story weren't believable and it took me out of the story a little bit. I also didn't really like the ending very much, but I really enjoyed the art and I liked most of this story, like especially the beginning parts of the story, I really enjoyed. So that one's a three stars, but I think right now I'm gonna pick up My Hero Academia like I said, I only have one volume of this, so we'll see how I like this one volume. So I finished My Hair Academia and it was really enjoyable, but I definitely don't think I'll be moving on with this series just because, like I said in the beginning, I don't always love superhero stuff. This did make me laugh. I really like the concept behind it, um, especially because in this world, 80% of the population was born with what is called the quirk and the quirk basically gives you the ability to be a superhero. And so it was very commonplace to be a superhero. And our main character actually was not born with the quirk despite his parents being born with one and he now is in middle school and really desperately wanting to go to this other school to study to be a superhero he ends up crossing paths with a superhero and discovers kind of a secret about the superhero and they form a friendship of sorts and it's really funny it's really fast paced there's a lot going on on each page and for whatever reason that was really distracting for me i think that's the thing about superhero comics in general for me is that I get really distracted like my eyes completely wander to the wrong places I can't like keep it in order <laughs> so it was a little bit distracting I like the friendship that unfolded in here it was just really fun and fast-paced and I can see why this is a favorite for people but yeah like I said I just don't like superhero stuff enough to want to move on with this but I am glad that I read it I also read the second short story in this collection it is called the neck specter and that was really good it was like a five out of five stars it was creepy it was very fast paced and quick and i loved the art like i said the art in here is stunning and also incredibly creepy and i've just been enjoying it a lot despite the first story being a little bit cheesy in my opinion and actually the next five short stories are the same main character so i'm really excited to see what's happening with this character so i'll probably read one more short story in this and then i'm gonna move on to one piece Yeah, I'm still in the same place, but I finished one piece and I finished two more stories than Frankenstein. So let's start with one piece. Um, I don't really have a rating for this. I, I don't, I don't even think I rated My Hero Academia because I just don't think these are for me. Like I had a lot of fun and it's wild, much like My Hero Academia, it's over the top. There's a lot going on. And I liked some of the messages in here. I liked the pirate aspect of it. I thought that some things were pretty funny, but this just isn't for me. I won't move on with this. I'm also not 100% sure. I'm gonna look into it, but I think this is an anime as well. And I would be interested to watch the anime. Um, I actually don't think I told you what this is about. So basically you have our main character, this guy right here named Luffy, and and he wants to be the greatest pirate in the world because when he was growing up he used to hang out at his village bar where these pirates would kind of make their residence for a short period of time before they went back out to sea and he kind of became friends with them and on one visit they had a fruit from a gum gum tree and basically anybody who consumes that fruit has like a rubbery 
um, arms and they just kind of turn to rubber, but it doesn't kill them. It just makes them a, a living rubber person. And Luffy ends up eating it as a child and becomes a living rubber person. And they're basically like, you're never going to be a pirate. And he gets really angry and tries to prove them wrong. And then it jumps to like 10 years later where he is on his own and is determined to become a pirate and he's trying to find a crew. So that's what the story follows is him trying to find a crew and he is still a rubber person. <laughs> and then I read two stories from Frankenstein. I don't remember the names of them. So the first one I read is A Bog of Living Spirits. I gave this one a five out of five stars. They're very short and creepy. And then I just finished Pen Pal, which I would also give a five out of five stars. That one was especially good. I actually think out of all of the short stories that I've read so far, that one was probably my favorite. And then the bog one. I'm really loving this collection. This is like what Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark wanted to be, but just couldn't. It just couldn't do it. So obviously I still have the rest of the short stories in Frankenstein to read. And then I have these guys left. And I think I'm going to read this one just because I only have one volume of it. And then I'll probably do Tokyo Ghoul and then end it with The Promised Neverland because I don't know why I'm so excited about that one. <laughs> Maybe I'll like move to my bed. Let's do that. So you're asking yourself, why aren't you in a different location like you said in your last clip? And that's because I haven't moved. <laughs> I have moved. I got up to order food and I spent some time on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter even though Twitter just sucks the life out of me most days. Anyways, I have not started this, but I'm gonna start it while I wait for my food. Maybe I can finish it before my food gets here because it's supposed to take an hour. Although I'm not gonna lie to you, my back is hurting from sitting on this couch all day reading this stuff. I mean, I say all day, it's been all day, yeah. I've moved, I've done things, but like I've mostly been on the couch. Also, I haven't even checked my island today. <laughs> homeboy naked let's find out <laughs> she literally said she literally said put on some clothes <laughs> He's going on a bookstore date. Oh my God. They both like reading. She's gonna be a ghoul. Good morning friends, so it is like 9 o'clock. I started reading yesterday around 12.30 or 1, so I'm gonna read till 12.30 or 1, but I finished a lot of things, so let's talk about that first. So I finished The Demon Prince of Momochi House, and I really, really liked this. Um, it was really fun. Um, I didn't notice before, but on the back it says it's a shoujo beat, which I know that shoujo is supposed to be romantic manga, so this definitely has that element in it, and it didn't bother me. I know that usually I don't love romantic stuff but the characters in here were really funny so I could see myself moving on with this series especially because obviously this is the first volume so you don't get
get a lot of information on this house and how it exists between the living and the spiritual worlds. Also, this character that you're introduced to is somebody who protects the house. So you don't know really anything about how that happened, except for that when he was younger, the house chose him. Although our main character, who is her is technically the rightful heir of this house but she doesn't know anything about her responsibilities and what this house means and why she inherited it her parents are no longer around and she doesn't have any living relatives that she knows of so it's cool because it'll be one of those situations where you get to learn about this world through the main character um i also really love the art style in here so i do look forward to moving on with this one i then read the first two volumes of tokyo ghoul and i actually love this one. I already see myself going out and picking up a few more volumes of this because I really love the world building. As you can tell, this is about ghouls if you don't already know. So basically our main character within the first couple of pages actually ends up going on a date with a ghoul and then they get into this weird accident where the ghoul dies and he is in severe condition. So the doctor makes the decision to use the ghoul who looks like a human to use her organs to save his life. And so in the first volume, he's basically going through the motions of realizing that he is a ghoul and that he doesn't crave human food anymore. He craves human flesh now. And he sits on this weird cusp of being a ghoul and a human. Um, and so he gets taken in by these other ghouls and they're kind of helping him out through this transition and figuring out what he can do and what this means for him. So again, you're learning stuff through the main character. Love that. So I was really enjoying this one. And in the second volume, you're starting to get a storyline that will probably be something that lasts for a little while. And in this volume, you're introduced to a couple new characters who I really enjoyed. I will say though, that in the first volume, our main character is repulsed by food because of his transition that's happening. And so it made me feel repulsed by food. <laughs> It's also really funny because our main character ends up working in a coffee shop and I am a sucker for anything where somebody starts to work in a coffee shop because I worked in coffee for many years. So I just, it feels like being home. But yeah, I definitely see myself moving on with this and I can only imagine that the story will get more intricate and interesting as you go along and there's still so much to learn and I'm excited to learn more. Lastly, I actually finished all of the stories in Frankenstein. They were pretty short, so I just decided to finish them off. So the last two short stories that I read are the Oshikiri stories, which I was talking about earlier, where there's a bunch of stories that have the same main character. His name is Oshikiri. So I read the last two of his tales, I guess, and I gave those both three stars. I enjoyed them, but they weren't as good as the other ones. And then there was one called The Hell of the Doll Funeral. I gave this one three stars as well. It was fine. Um, Face Firmly in Place was probably four stars just because it was really, a it's like a nightmare, a real nightmare type situation. And then the last two short stories, Boss Nan Nan, Hide and Seek with Boss Nan Nan, they're basically little short stories about um, Jujito's dog and they were really cute. I'm not rating them. So overall, this is probably a four star read, if not like a 3.5. And I only say that because Frankenstein takes up a huge chunk of this book and I didn't really enjoy Frankenstein that much, but the rest of the short stories were really solid and I'm definitely gonna check out more of Jinjito. So now we just have the last two because I don't think I'm gonna read Orange, but the Never Prom, nope, the Promise to Neverland. So I'll start these in a little while, but I just had a package delivered. I, I opened it already though, sorry. <laughs> I always do this where I get a package and I quickly open it because I'm so excited and then remember that I'm like filming a video and I could just do this for the vlog, but... But I got Assassin's Apprentice and... Is this Assassin's Quest? Yeah. Royal Assassin is the second book, but it came separately for some reason. I bought all three. I've read Assassin's Apprentice and I really liked it, but I'm gonna reread it. I read it right when the pandemic started and I don't 
remember this. So I, it would be impossible for me to move on to the second one. It's also impossible for me to move on to the second one because it's not here yet. This is the start of a fantasy trilogy. You follow our main character Fitz and Fitz is an outcast. He was an orphan and an outcast and he ends up becoming an assassin's apprentice and he has a pretty tragic story. I do remember that. I buddy read this with a friend and I remember us talking about how this boy could not get a break in this book. So I am excited to reread it. And I finally found these editions online because you can't find them in bookstores. At least none of the bookstores around me have ever had them. They always have the mass market. And this one is so much chunkier than I thought. <laughs> I, when I opened it, I was like, what? <laughs> it's almost 900 pages. So long, silent movies. Quiet I think this is a horror manga. I knew something was up when they had tattoos on their necks. So long, burning slowly. Smelling sweat and kerosene. And all the actors on the stage are rolling cigarettes and whispering so low. I thought these were going to be wholesome and they're horror. Okay, so I finished the first two volumes of The Promised Neverland and holy shit, this is horror manga. I thought this was going to be like wholesome. We live in a boarding house. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I just read. Um, I can't really give you a synopsis other than what it says on here is that Emma, Norman, and Ray are the brightest kids at the Grace Field House Orphanage. And under the care of the woman they refer to as mom, all the kids have enjoyed a comfortable life, good food, clean clothes, and the perfect environment to learn. What more could an orphan ask for? One day though, Emma and Norman uncover the dark truth of the outside world they are forbidden from seeing. I'm definitely going to be moving on. It had great characters. It had a great plot. It had a shocking plot. Uh, I went on Goodreads because I wanted to see something specific when I started reading this. So I went on Goodreads to see if other people that I knew had read this and their reviews were pretty funny to me because it's exactly how I felt. But I learned from the back of this which I didn't see before it actually says this is rated for older teens and I absolutely agree because these covers would make you think that this could be I guess middle grade like for younger audiences it's not it's definitely not now I need to go look up how many volumes there are and how many volumes are available at my library right now because I actually can't remember this is probably my favorite out of everything that I read. So speaking of, this is the last one. So let's recap everything I read. So I read My Hero Academia and I think I gave this like three stars. It was really fun, but it's not for me. I just don't really love superhero stuff, but this is really funny. And if you do even slightly like superhero stuff, this is definitely for you. I actually laughed out loud at things and the unlikely friendship in here really funny. I then read One Piece, which I also gave three stars. This was another one where it was really fun, really funny. I do think it's geared towards a younger audience. I'm not 100% sure. It does feel like it's geared towards a younger audience at some points just based off the way that it's written. This is not something that I'll continue forward with and I think I said that for My Hero Academia. It's not for me so I won't be continuing forward with it. But I'm glad that I read it. I love pirate stuff. I would be curious to watch an anime if an anime exists for One Piece. I then read The Demon Prince of Momochi House. I gave this about four stars. This is really fun. It does have over the top romantic elements to it, but I actually liked that in this medium, surprisingly. And I really liked all of the characters in here, especially our two main characters. They were pretty funny and I loved the art style in here. I think I'll move on with this one, but I'm not desperate to go pick up a bunch of volumes of it. I then read the first two volumes of Tokyo Ghoul and I'm giving this a five stars. I am absolutely moving on with the series. This was really fun, fast paced. I like the art style. I like all of the characters and it's one of those situations where the main character is somebody that's learning about this new world that they've been introduced to so I'm excited to continue learning about this world with them. I then read Frankenstein by Jinji Ito which is Frankenstein and a bunch of short stories and while I didn't like Frankenstein very much it was about a three stars the rest of them varied between three to five stars but that's the thing with short stories in any medium is that I don't always love all of the short stories. I don't often reach for short stories so I had a 
really good experience with this considering and it makes me even more interested in picking up a full length Jinji Ito. Honestly, I think the fact that I liked more than half of what I picked up is a success to me and I'm so excited to explore even more manga because I, I've always kind of been intimidated by manga. I never know where to start, but I'm actually really happy that I did this. And thank you all who gave me suggestions because it was really fun going through your suggestions and being able to read things that I know other people have enjoyed. But otherwise, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.